the action items obvious if i were to say right now action item each week Vinny shows up with more than just his opinions but he brings two or three actual <laughs> demos of ai products that would put it as an action item yes Vinny? that's correct jason okay <laughs> this week in startups is brought to you by masterclass learn from the world's best minds anytime anywhere and at your own pace Get 15% off an annual membership to Masterclass at masterclass.com slash startups. Merge. Let your developers get back to their core product. Merge is a single API to add hundreds of integrations to your app. Integrate up to three customers for free today at merge.dev slash twist and lemon.io. Need to speed up your product development without draining your budget? Hire vetted engineers from Europe at Lemon.io. Go to Lemon.io slash twist to get 15% off for the first four weeks. All right, everybody, welcome to This Week in Startups. It's our AI roundtable with Sunny Madra and Vinny Lingham. If we look a little different right now, it's because we're trying out Vinny's super cool new product, weightroom.com. Tell us, uh, welcome back to the show, Sunny and Vinny. Good to be back. Good to All be right. back, Jason. Thanks, thanks for uh, joining me on Weightroom. Yeah, so it's weightroom.com. This is your product. Um, yes. I see three video windows. Looks similar. Uh, it's in a browser. It looks similar to Zoom with some slight differences. Tell us uh, what we're experiencing here and how AI works into all this. So if you just click on the right-hand side, you obviously see people, but go to the Summer, yes. AI, summer AI. Summer. Summer. Yeah, summer, summer summarize. Rise. Summarize, exactly. Yeah. Summer AI. Summer. Yeah, and so you can then see all the all the stuff which, like we've been chatting about before we started the recording. Oh, um, wow. So the action item, uh, Michael to invest in audio and video stems and signs it to Michael. Michael's my co-founder, he's in the room here as well, he's listening. And it gives insights there that you have. You can scroll up Got and it. see all the different stuff we've spoke about. And it's really cool because not, like we, we're going to have a Slack integration button here, so you will push these things to Slack and you can push this. This is people. crazy. Look at this. It says catch up. The team engaged in a casual conversation about video quality beauty filters touch up my appearance and recording methods during a virtual meeting that's an accurate description of my first five minutes on here so if somebody mm -hmm. was coming in they can catch up really quickly but also this insight here the action items obvious if i were to say right now action item each week Vinny shows up with more than just his opinions but he brings two or three actual <laughs> demos of ai products that would put it as an action item yes Vinny? That's correct, Jason. Okay. <laughs> What's the lag between me telling you an action item and it actually getting done? And then also some uh, AI summarizing well, it. It's, uh, it's two actually, questions. So why, why don't we get my, uh, my co-founder, Michael, to chime in quickly. And this is the, the chiming feature. So he gets 45 seconds to tell us. Oh, okay. So it takes about two and a half minutes. Obviously, you can't summarize every second because that wouldn't make any sense. But it's approximately two and a half minutes of conversation. Uh, that we summarize every in chunks as they go along. We also, mm. the stories also get better over time because we keep feeding that context as the conversation is happening to the, to the LLM. And so it gets more accurate and just, you know, improves as it goes along. What's more difficult, Michael? Um, you know, the new state of AI and working with these language models or dealing with an insane dictator like Vinny? <laughs> this is, this is the, 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 oh well, the sorry you're out of time you're, you're out, out of time, time. that's right. the end of your 45 <laughs> seconds sorry michael uh, that's actually pretty cool though yeah. so yeah. i'm looking at it right now while we were having that chime in feature um mm -hmm. so this is kind of cool for a live audience uh, i could have people i could allow people 45 seconds and i can hover over that end key and just end them anytime i want absolutely um, but and you get multiple here. people chiming in as well, and you can have oh, uh, multi chimes. We, we, yeah, we, we've had hundreds and thousands of people in, in the room, so it's like kind of like Twitter Spaces, but with video. So you yeah. could do a video like the three of us, and then people you, know, you can add more co-hosts, or you can just have people chime in for a few seconds. Sure, great. Um, what I like about it though is while we were talking, it did an insight, and again, it's like it's like a DVR. It's like every two and a half minutes, it chunks the transcript and tries to make sense of it. And here it says insightweightroom.com can help teams catch up faster with meeting summaries and action items, et cetera. Except, uh, except uh, it's a, a transcribe weight room incorrectly, uh, W-E-I-G-H-T ah. versus W-A-I-T sure. room. Now, um, the, the, the cool thing is that now on the back end, we're going to train that. And so mm -hmm. it'll now recognize that when you refer to weight room, it actually means weight room. So, so it's going to get smarter over time. And when we move from... G, you know, chat like GPT four to four point five or five, 
as well, we look, my action the, uh, item came in. Uh, so promises, let me do another uh, action item here. Action item. <laughs> Allow each some AI item, whether it's a catch-up action item or insight, to have a threaded comment thread and port all of those or pipe all of those into a Google Sheet, Notion page, or Slack room. So we have them for all time. That's an action item. That uh, guy, Michael, do that. action item, Michael. Um, so, you, you know, I, I think... This um, is great for a dictatorship. This kind of <laughs> software really shows yeah. the power of oh. uh, dictators. No, Michael cannot chime in. No. Okay. okay. So <laughs> no. Uh, not Michael, you had your shot. That's enough. <laughs> not for you, Michael. <laughs> Mike's like, I want another 45 seconds. Well, that's, that's the beauty of this. So anyway, so, so this, I, I think the purpose of this demo here was to just show you like what we're doing. And, you, and so we're, we're actually focusing right now is on, on VCs, funny enough. So hmm. we, because VCs have a very strong power in the industry right now. If you're a startup and you get a link from a VC, you want to pitch them on, mm -hmm. um, you know, on your startup, you don't care whether it's a Zoom link, a, a, a Microsoft Meetings link or a Waitroom link. You'll use whatever they yes. give you to join the call. So that's the first thing. Secondly is VCs tend to be a little lazier. They don't want to be updating their Salesforce every single time they, they, they chat to a startup. We will have a Salesforce integration where every time you have a meeting, it updates when you spoke to them and then also put in... Uh, you know, information, you know, insight from the meeting in there into the notes, etc. And the reason this is interesting is that we are building custom prompts around our LLM, uh, and, and well, we'll have an LLM in the future probably. But for now, custom prompts on on, on GPT uh, on OpenAI, and those custom prompts understand the VC's business intricately. So as the as the startup is. Uh, pitching, giving things, giving ideas. It'll be able to alert you to potential conflicts with other startups in your portfolio. It'll be able to tell you, uh, you know, in, maybe you should connect this guy with that with with, a, with another founder in the portfolio. So we're going to make it very customized. And the summer AI tab right now is common between all three of us. But you can ah. have a private you can have a private tab as well, ah. where it gives you private insights. Like, hey, Sunny's company is in conflict with this other portfolio company. Be careful not to tell them about this project that well, the company is working on. Be careful on. with that. Be careful with that feature. Well, well, no. So we have to train it, right? So once the yeah. model's well trained, it's going to give insights to the to the VC or whoever is the host uh, and private insights. So that, uh, that's I think that's powerful. That's a really interesting idea. Okay, Sonny, you've been hearing all this and you're looking at it. Uh, what are your thoughts on this 1.0 of real time meeting transcriptions, action items? I know some other people like Otter, and there's a couple of other yeah. people who've had some, you know, uh, touched on some of these ideas. But this is pretty much the best execution I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I think in your action item just showed up in the right here. Um, look, I, I really like this. Y you know, it's almost th there's like two aspects. One, there's the real time capture of information that's like, you know, generally been a problem. And I think, you know, Vinny has it done it really nice, like integrated natively in the product. A lot of those tools, you have to add them as like extensions or like a new person into a zo Zoom meeting, which obviously, you know, changes the dynamic of a meeting. So I, I really like that. I think the other thing that's cool here is the feature that Vinny just talked about is like the back channel, right? So whenever you're mm. running a meeting, you always have some kind of back channel running, either it's, yes. you know, within a private chat or a WhatsApp or iMessage. And so, to and, and most of that is just for context of like, oh, hey, like, let's talk about this next or something. And so I think like combining that could be really, really powerful. Um, th you know, th these actions are coming in really great. Like, I think it's, it's you know, it did we the other action item, right which was pipe uh, AI items like catch up action items, insights into Google Sheets, Notion, and or Slack, which was the yeah. exact. So w in order for these kind of technologies to work, you need to have some um, percentage confidence, I think, right, Sonny? Like, yeah. uh, I don't mind if wait room is spelled wrong. You know, that people could hear that wrong. Like a human mm -hmm. hears that wrong all the time. Yeah. I might say yeah. palm and they think it's palm, yeah. you know, uh, you yeah. know. I might mm -hmm. say Apple, they might think it's Snapple. It doesn't really matter if it gets a word wrong once in a while. But if it gets the the gist of it, I can edit it and, and work on it. But I, yeah. when you have a great product like this or a great starting point, Vinny, I always tell founders this. Um, you can tell when something has really got some potential, something does have a lot of potential if users, when using it, immediately come up with five or six ideas. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the perfect roadmap. It could be custom software for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at least it means Sunny. That people are inspired so what do you think you add to this next what are the features you add next to weight room if you were on the board or you were an investor i don't know if you are an investor what are you telling yeah. Vinny? hey dummy you missed this this and this 
Well, look, I, I, I think the, the opportunity here is when Zoom took off, you know, you know, during the pandemic and at the start, it was really low friction. What's mm-hmm. happened is as it's, you know, kind of gone enterprise, it, it has lost some of that low friction stuff. And now there was reasons for it. People were showing up in random Zooms and all that. So I'd say, go back to low friction, Vinny, keep the cost mm-hmm. super low. I really like this idea of shortening the meetings. And so um, take, take, you're, you're already kind of doing that. And so, and then integrating with the other tools. I think that's the, mm-hmm. the, the biggest, mm-hmm. biggest, you know, feature here is integrating into other, um, you know, workflows connect that the we API, have. Connect the API to if this, then that and Zapier and you've got yeah. it. Yeah, we're doing Zapier very soon as well. Tons of tons yep. of integration. And, and by the way, it's free. So like we're not yeah. even charging for it right now. It's free because, you know, we want the models to learn and train. And so the more conversations we have, the better we're getting at, at, at doing this. So, and the, uh, you the, know. The good news for building services like this, I remember there was a Sequoia company um, that made video conferencing as a service. And I think all like AWS and Google, they all provide some sort of video yep. relay as a service now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Which one do you, which ones have you tried or which one do you use? Any thoughts on the back end here and how effective that I is? Haven't for used, I haven't used any of those. Yeah. So did you, you didn't have to write the video back end though, right? No, 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 no. Uh, we, we use Agora. So, uh, Agora, I mean, I, I, yeah, we, so we use Agora on a back end. Um, uh-huh. uh, but we, you know, we like, there, there are a number of companies doing it and Agora has been doing it for quite a while and they're a public company and we've been working and they, you know, we, we kind of use them, I guess, when Clubhouse was blowing up um, mm-hmm. and they were using Agora and we said, okay, well, we should try it as well because they got some crazy amount of scale. And by the way, uh-huh. Clubhouse went the same VC route as well. They went to the VCs first, built the community and then it just blew up and yeah. we, we started using Agora and the product has improved dramatically over the past two years. I mean, we, you know, Agora's like, product, yeah. Agora's just product, keep adding yeah, features, yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the founder came from Webex, uh, and the other founder, co founder, like, was, uh, I think is a co founder of Zoom as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, these guys understand their business and we're very, like, we're, we're very happy to, you know, use their platform. And it's going well. I mean, like, the, the quality we, so we're running this stream at 640 by 360. We can jack it up to whatever, right? So, um, yeah. the, it, it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy for us to go up because while it's free right now, this is live in production, by the way. So it's just free. So we're running low res because why should we pay, you know, yeah. the, the high res? We're not, we're not charging people. We're still in product development phase, but as the product improves and we get, I think we're going to, we can go up to 4k. So, um, Incredible. you know, so we, that could be a, an upgrade package, right? So you pay for weight room, the AI is built in, you want 4k, you pay a little bit more. You want mm-hmm. uh, integrations into certain, you know, into Salesforce There's a, a fee for that. So there's the ways for us to is, make money. You could also have, a um a third tab here which is transcript and yeah. you can annotate the transcript so you can have another one just the you know running ah. transcript and you can annotate it uh, at, highlights the, at, us, the turn, yeah. at the end of the meeting at the end of the meeting you're going to get a, a meeting minutes of the entire meeting yeah. so right. it, it get emailed yeah. to you and then you can forward mm-hmm. it around or you can send it to people in the company so we do well, all I that mean, already even here when you have an insight or a catch-up or an action item it tells you the timestamp of it yeah. and so that mm-hmm. is super helpful if you wanted to jump to the timestamp you could. Yeah. Um, and it's a range. And it's a range. Like the last one you just came through here, 1036 to 1038. So for the past two minutes, we've been speaking about Agora's experience with Clubhouse and founder's background. Like, so it, you know, it tells you the time, like the t- it's not a, a single time stamp. It's the range of when the conversation happened. Yeah, it's great. One of the reasons why criticism can feel obnoxiously aggressive is that sometimes people use criticism to sort of dominate or assert superiority. And that is not helpful criticism. So state your intention to be helpful. That was Radical Candor, author and friend of this podcast, Kim Scott. She just did her masterclass session called Tackle the Hard Conversations with Radical Candor, a great concept, a great philosophy of running a business. And if you're a business leader, hey, you're going to learn so much on masterclass. There are amazing lessons from Bob Iger on leadership, Chris Voss on negotiations, Alexis Ohanian, another friend of the pod on startup investing, and so much more. These are the legends in their specific verticals, in their crafts and uh, masterclass will teach you what they know and you're going to learn on your own time paying for an unlimited masterclass subscription it's a total no-brainer listen how many times in this life do you get to hear from this level of virtuoso very rare very rare that you get to and that was just one you know insight from kim in 15 seconds imagine how much you're going to learn in 10 minutes 
maybe in two hours. Why don't you set yourself up with a masterclass subscription? Here's your call to action. Super simple. Get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a Twist listener, you're going to get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash startups. That's masterclass.com slash startups for 15% off an annual membership, masterclass.com slash startups. And I guess you could pick more or less. So that would be kind of cool too, is if I could have three settings, like more details, less details, because, mm-hmm. you know, and then also, to, how do, does it know who everybody is? Uh, yes, because, because it, it knows it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it knows you, Jason. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting um, for our producer, producer Nick. You know, when you have guests on the show or people are speaking, you get four different quick times from them and you can kind of line them up. But when you send a raw Zoom meeting, it, it doesn't know who's who, right? You have to train it on who's who if you're using a service like Temi or any other like, script or whatever. You have to like assign who is who. But here you don't. You know 100% who is who because they dialed into the meeting. So that's kind of awesome as well. You could put the percentage that people spoke, mm-hmm. uh, people yeah. who didn't speak, you could do um, what, uh, what is the one for salespeople gong? And there's a bunch of competitors to gong, you could put like people, you know, people who ask questions, mm-hmm. people who are inquisitive, uh, people who are definitive, you can kind of, uh, you know, add those kind of characteristics to it. So when I use Grammarly, Grammarly, um has a feature where it will tell you i don't know if you, do you use grammarly sunny yeah i yep. use it do. Yeah. Yep. do you either of you pay for grammarly i do i do i pay yeah. for it too so it's very interesting yeah. and i pay for all my teams to use it and when they don't have it on like on a video conference mm. i go nuts because i'm just like look at these spelling errors look at these grammar errors mm. like mm. Uh, i'm a writer like I, I have errors like if you're going fast and you're typing um but it has ai built into it now to make things longer shorter etc but it also just has tone detection. So it's like, this is definitive. Well, this that's the thing. So with AI, you're going to have, so we, in the future, within three to five years, we're going to have the ability to read Sunny's face, your face, my face, look for like in, in, in expression points, see, oh, Jason's angry <laughs> right now. Sunny's happy, etc. That's and, my and, bullshit <laughs> face. <laughs> you be able to do all, you, you, I think you pretty cool stuff on, especially large groups. Uh, but like, but, you know, back to, what you, back, to what you, <laughs> back to what you were saying about the uh, summaries. So Michael's actually working on uh, daily digest right now. So you'll be able to get a daily digest of all your meetings, daily stats, mm. summaries. And oh, the other cool thing, Jason, you could say mm. something in this meeting like, hey, Nick, uh, ping me next week or, or even say, Nick, I'll give you, I'll, I'll send this doc to you by Sunday. And on Saturday, you'll get an email from the system saying, hey, you promised mm. Nick in this meeting. Reminders. So now, you know, remind us. So, so, so because it's intelligently understanding what the conversation is about, we're going to yeah. make it, we're going to make it way more integrated into your life. It's interesting if you combine this sunny with something like Slack or Asana mm-hmm. or, or Notion or Coda, yeah, where people are doing their task management, et cetera, you could have these conversations, know the project we're working on and have the OKRs or whatever yeah. uh, and, and have the context of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, what's interesting here, Vinny, like, you know, when you've been evolving this product, and it's weight room, you know, from its first incarnate incarnation, but it really is interesting now that you could think about this as a AI native, um, like meeting tool, r- rather that's than sort of the weight mm-hmm. room, whether rather than the weight room concept. And so yeah. uh, that's super powerful, because it, it it's doing all the work is what we see these AIs doing for us. And so mm. I don't know, maybe you have to even consider the, the name change we, or something. We, like that. Yeah, we have, we have, we have, yep. de- we've had some conversations about that. That's definitely, nah, uh, wait, what's great. Wait, room but, is great. But J- Jason says it's nice. So I, like, I think also right. like it's one word to, domain name. It'll add all this other features. It sticks, uh, to, you know, it's, 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 it sticks, it sticks to the, the, the sort of roots that we have. We, 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 we can consider it. Uh, we do have like nation, notion integration as well. Um, you'll be able to, Ask Summer, like, hey, Summer, what, what are the sales for um, the past three months in the company? And if it's in Notion, it'll look it up and give it to you right there. So while you're having a conversation, having a meeting, you can actually, without interrupting, like, you, interrupting the flow, opening up a new tab and whatever else, be able hey, to pull a, that information out. You have a live out. assistant who's doing yeah. work for you. It's like having Jarvis yeah. at an yeah. adventures yeah. meeting. You I, know? I tried getting Jarvis.com. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough. This has been great. Uh, there's your 20 minute commercial for uh, weight room, but this seriously great job on the AI features. Uh, and let's go back to zoom and finish the episode. All right, Sunny, you've been great at getting a bunch of really interesting demos every week here for our uh, AI roundtable on this week in startups over the past week. What did you play with? What did you find most interesting? 
Yeah, so uh, I'm going to touch on some things that we saw in different places, I think a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to just pull up a video here. And uh, we tried the Google um, Music Generator. So now we have, which was called Music LLM, now we have Music Gen from Facebook and Meta. And so uh, very similar. Interestingly, you know, there is... Um, someone has taken it and, and themselves and hosted it at um, at Hugging Face because you know we've talked about how, what Hugging Face is doing for the AI community as well, which is great. And so very similar um, to the the Google one we looked at. It's a Facebook one, and uh, you know it's hosted here, so it takes a little bit longer to generate. So I pre-generated, but you can see the examples down below here, where if you want an '80s driving pop song with drums in the background or a Ooh, I like that '90s. Yeah, you want to try this one? Yeah, sure. All right. We're going to have to wait a second here. This does take some time. But um, so this particular um, service is generating, um, again, music samples, I think really, really powerful for creators, or, you know, folks that need intro, outro music. Um, maybe for this pod, we can generate one of these now because uh, we can do something slightly different than... Um, uh, what what's already there in the the uh, the default this week in startup jcal okay let me ask you a question about this processing speed that's going on here if you had um if you were doing this on your local computer and you had some great gpus would it go faster or is this oh, like yeah. using a lot of cloud no th th this because it's a free service is not using a lot of infrastructure so you're probably getting like shared gpu services so if you had a huh. really great gpu locally um, you would you would definitely get like a, a faster return here. It's only generating about twelve seconds as well. Okay. So, yeah. So All let's right, hear so it. We, let's hear it. Yeah. This feels like a Miami Vice episode. <laughs> Miami Vice, a two-part series. This Sunday night on NBC. <laughs> so I, know, I was just... going to talk in the episode. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> It's pretty great. I have to say, yeah. but, like if it's doing this today, it's going to be doing so much more. I was, you know, when we went to see Kygo, uh, me, me and Sonny went to see, is it Kygo? Is that how you pronounce his name? I think Kygo, so. Yeah. yeah Kygo's so. amazing. Yeah. I decided yeah. I would like to be a DJ uh, and do a DJ set. Um, so I'm going to, I want to do like a, a JCal AI DJ set, but I need to, I'm going to need help. I want a completely AI generated original DJ set. So. I'll put that on the list of things that uh, somebody can help me with to get themselves a general admission ticket. I need a, <laughs> I need a producer or somebody to prompt engineer. I don't know what I need exactly. Um, I think you need a prompt engineer, a producer mm. that is also good at prompt engineering. I mean, in the future, you'll have like prompt engineers and then, uh, yeah, drop in some Grimes vocals from the AI there. And yep. uh, yeah, just get a producer, get blood pop to, to polish it off. Done and done. Yeah. But uh, so, you know, look, what, why is this interesting? We're just seeing now and like, well, let's maybe pause this one for a second, but you know, Facebook's work or in and around the open source is great because they're making mm -hmm. these models available for everyone to use and, and pick them up working obviously very closely with hugging face. And so I think it's great, great for the ecosystem. What's going to be great about this, you know, Vinny, is if you look at the bottom 50% of music usage, um, it doesn't require, you know, all that much um, quality. It doesn't require that much uniqueness. If mm. we were doing something where we needed a little bit of music for a short film or a commercial background for an ad read in a podcast, you know, this will let you instead of using stock music for your YouTube video, create something unique for you. But the truth is those people would never have hired an actual musician in the world to do this. They would never have spent a thousand dollars on it. They would have bought stock music for 10 bucks. And so here, instead of buying stock music for 10 bucks, you can do it for free uh, mm -hmm. and make something truly unique. And, and that's just something that dawned on me, Vinny, is that we're going to be able to make unique stuff that's better than clip art and royalty free. Yeah, so I'm actually investing in a, a music startup um, that I, I can't tell a little bit more stealthy, but they're basically, the, the, their thesis is that um, music gets democratized. Like, I can't play an instrument, right? So I'm, I'm terrible. Like, I can't, I can't play music. I love listening to music. I can't play it. And so they're trying to make it simpler for people to create this music and using AI as part of the whole thing. I, and, and I think, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more 
of those types of startups in the market. We're basically enabling the mass market to be more participatory in the music industry, creating music. Now, obviously, you're gonna, you know, it's it's one of the things where music itself to learn like how to read music and sheet music and and how to play instruments is it takes years and lots of like uh, you know uh, muscle memory, etc. Now. I think there's there's definitely an opportunity for like what Rock Band did, right? Rock Band crushed it when they came out. They, um, you know, kids were playing Rock Band all the time on their Playstations and drumming and whatever else. Uh, and I, I think you're going to see more of that. I think you're going to see more startups hmm. leveraging AI to to basically make it really really easy to create your own music. And and this is a good example of it already. Well, you can see where this is going to go, Vinny uh, Sunny. Very simply, uh, there will be one of these for drums, one of these for guitars, one of these for mm -hmm. vocals, one of these for piano. And, you know, you'll be able to specialize in a particular instrument, you know, and, and go deep on that, right? Like, if you just think about guitar, I saw you had like a guitar riff, you could start really, uh, you know, an AI could go very deep just in guitar, guitar, whether it's classical or rock or heavy metal, you know, uh, folk music, etc. Nobody's yeah. done that yet, right? No, I mean, I think... And that's, that's a really good insight, JKL, in terms of like where we're probably going to go overall with these models is we'll start with really large ones that are generic, and then we'll work our way into like, you know, I guess like almost application specific. And so a really great one for guitars and a really great one for synthesizers. And so, yeah, I, I, and then people will specialize them in the way they do with real instruments, right? They'll understand how to work with them to get them, you know, like as a, as a musician can understand how to work with a guitar to get it to generate you know, incredible sounds, we'll see the same thing here. Yeah. And then the next step, Vinny, is you say, here's an artist, and here's their catalog. Um, here's their views and comments on YouTube. You know, so you, you take mm -hmm. an artist, you know, that has an incredible library, say Bob Dylan, just feed in the entire Bob Dylan.com lyric site, every album, every bootleg concert. Uh, and then you say, come up with a new song for Bob Dylan that combines you know this news story you know something happening in the world with you know and, and write me a protest song or give me some ideas for a protest song i did this the other night where i was trying to come up with names for a new conference i was brainstorming after angel summer went so well i had an idea for a new conference and i was brainstorming with chat gpt and i was like come up with a name for this new podcast and this mm. new <laughs> conference and it has to have this word in it and it came back with three incredible names that I would have never come up with. And this That's was great. in the first 10 minutes of brainstorming with ChatGPT. So the brainstorming forgives uh, your accuracy. Hallucinations in brainstorming are good. Great. You know, yeah. kind of like, that's why people smoke weed. And I'm not advocating smoking weed uh, for kids listening. But that's why some <laughs> people will, you know, take a gummy or smoke some weed and then come up with a brainstorming ideas. Mm. I kind of feel like we're, we're also going to see something in that vein where you take the body of work plus these new tools, and then come up with uh, either unbelievably uncannily accurate tracks or new sounds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also hard. It's also hard to tell. I mean, I, I've seen people posting clips of, "Hey, here's a collab between these two musicians," and then they go, "Ha, kidding! I just created that using you know AI." And so, like, how do you know anymore when you like? It's it's going to be really, really difficult to, um, yeah. To, like, I'm I'm a bit, bit concerned with identity as it applies to audio because you, mm. you can't see right. Like, you, you know, visually you can see when it is a fake bot on the screen. Like you can, yeah, it's, that's not real. But with audio, it's so perfect and so crisp and so clear right now. You can mimic people's voices. You can create songs. You can like, I, 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 I'm almost certain we're going to get a number one hit that's fake at some point. Totally. Closing big enterprise deals is never easy. The last thing you want to do is slow down your sales team because of a lack of integrations in your product. And you know, B2B buyers, they expect integrations. You're a startup founder, you're building B2B software. They expect people management tools to work seamlessly with the payroll provider, to work with your CRM, to work with the accounting software. All this stuff has to be integrated in 2023 and going forward. And if it doesn't, it's a huge problem, you're probably going to lose the customer, right? But integrations, as you know, they're brutal to implement, and they take a long time, and you have to maintain them. What if there was a better solution? Well, there is, you need to use merge, which makes app integrations seamless merge is the leading unified API that allows you to launch your integrations in days, 
not quarters. Merge is going to unlock new revenue opportunities and make your customers happier. Merge offers hundreds of integrations across seven important categories. HRIS, that's human resource information systems. ATS, that's the application tracking systems. Accounting, CRM, ticketing, you know, all those marketing automation, of course, and you know, table stakes, file storage, merge has unlimited integrations. And they charge based on how many of your customers use these integrations, you only pay for what you use, or I should say what your customers use. So they're going to give you three linked accounts for free today at merge.dev slash twist. Again, you get three linked accounts for free already at merge.dev slash twist. Check it out. It is a game changer. I have a guy on uh, um, on YouTube I follow. Mm -hmm. He's called Laszlo Bernie. He's only got 34,000 yep. uh, subscribers. But check this out. This first one is The Sultan Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits, yeah. if it was written by Pink Floyd. So this guy understands the style so well that he can, you know, play The Sultans of Swing yeah. as if it was Pink Floyd, you know, Dire Straits to Pink Floyd. And then you can also do a, a Pink Floyd song as Dire Straits. Dire Straits. Uh, so this is Comfortably Numb, famous Pink Floyd song, coming at you. K-Rock, 97.5, New York City, Long Island, coming to you. Jones <laughs> Beach, 87 degrees. And overcast, we might get some thunderstorms while you're rocking the beach. Stick with us, get some AA batteries for well, your CD player. I also, I think I tweeted out like a couple of weeks ago, these guys hired this uh, actor who looks just like Paul McCartney mm. and, and they wrote this like parody song and he actually played the song, but like he, he, he used AI for the voice. So it sounded mm. just like Paul McCartney. They, they used AI for the, the, yeah, the actual song. And, but, but there's an actor. So now you think, what, what? That sounds like him. It looks like him. It's not, it's not an AI. It confused me because I thought it was an AI ver I thought, I thought the, like, I thought it was Paul McCartney for real, but they made, they made it look, it was kind of weird. It's, it's crazy. Well, it's kind of like the deep fake uh, Tom Cruise. Which there we go. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh my Lord. That is. Okay. Let's do another demo. All right. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. just c continuing here, another area, which I, I think is, is going to get really, really exciting, you know, ties into a bunch of uh, spatial stuff as we should call it now, because we mm -hmm. don't use the M word anymore um, is, uh, you know, 3d the generation. M word being metaverse <laughs> metaverse. Yes. <laughs> well, it's spatial now that there's yes. actually a real product. Yes. Made yes. by a real company. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there's, always been, there's always been real products. Um, so what you can see here, and you know, if you've ever been what in and around uh, Luma Labs, Luma Labs. Okay, here yep. we go. Yeah, Image so Luma 3D Labs. version yep. 1.2 alpha. Okay. Yep, exactly. And what they have here, and I, I don't have access. I'm on the wait list, but they have some you know pre-built um, 3D models. And so here, I'm going to just pull up a. Um, a highly detailed sculpture of a squirrel wearing a purple hoodie. And, you know, this is a proper 3D model. And you can imagine this is incredibly valuable for folks that are building things in the spatial verse and or video games, uh, mm. anything along those lines. And this, um, if you've been in around like 3D generation, this was a very, very, you know, kind of time consuming it's expensive. Uh, aspect. Yeah, and expensive. And so now... And, you know, for years, the way that this was mostly handled is there was these huge libraries of open source models that people would start with and then, you know, go from there. But now the ability to kind of generate these from a prompt is going to be incredible for, for the industry. Well, um, and give this is for video games as well. This is for Pixar yep. movies. This yep. is for any 3D modeling. Uh, could be games, could be casual games, uh, could be a, a movie or a TV show. So you can imagine immediately somebody taking a storyboard or sorry, somebody taking a screenplay and you could literally upload a screenplay to this product with a little bit of glue, maybe use chat GPT or Bard as the general AI in this model and then tell it to use this one to make the characters. But you take it and just say, Hey, you know, make Pulp Fiction, uh, but with cute furry animals or miniature animals. And it just takes every character makes them <laughs> into puppets or whatever you choose. Yeah. 
and uh, now you got a storyboard, and you yeah. just literally take scenes and say, "Make me this scene from Inglorious Bastards," uh, and um, then just give it prompts to change the characters around until you know Quentin Tarantino feels a certain inspiration. This is really going to be amazing for ideation from yeah. directors and screenplay writers, and they want. And, and by know, the way, they want to ban it. And on music, um, you know, a, a friend of mine who um, is a like kind of does a podcast as a rapper. You know, he he was saying what people don't understand with these music generated uh, AIs, like what we were talking about earlier, is this is how music is pitched, right? So today, if you want to pitch something to a famous artist, you may write it and then you may lay it down on a track and then get it over, but to put it in their voice mm. is going to be hugely beneficial for the creation industry because that's ah. how um, you know that's the and again like that's the general process and. I think, you know, Jake, you and I have talked about maybe having Rob Goldberg on to, to help us here because you know, he spent yeah. a lot of time in and around music. But um, that's the process, right? You come up with either the lyrics or the So I write this great beat. song. I'm Sia. Yep. I write yep. Chandelier. And instead yep. of, and then I just say, hey, here's me singing it. But then you say, take the top 10 pop artists yep. uh, who are trending Taylor. right now and yep. put it in their voices and send them a one minute sample yep. to their phones. And yes. And whoever wants this song can have it for a million bucks. Yeah. And wow, you know, that's powerful. Yeah. And so that, that I that thought that was nuts. a really in interesting way of looking at it because, you know, already today, you know, it's already happening. I may come up with a, like a beat or I may come up with the lyrics and then I'm, you know, recording it and sending it over. And then the artist has to think about how they think about, you know, how it would sound in their, their voice. Now you can take it one step further. And then the artist says, Oh, great. I want to take this on. So for creators, I, I really thought that was a interesting way for them to look at it. Hmm. And that applies uh, here. If you you know if you've yeah. got a great game idea before getting it funded, you could build something that's like a prototype, and then you know go off, uh, get your funding, and build out the whole you know the whole game. All right. <laughs> and uh, as we were talking about before, here is the uh, AI Steve Jobs, in J. Cal, uh, and uh, shout out to uh, Edward Brower Brower. I have wow. a, I have one demo I prepared for us. Great, well, awesome! You'll go next. One, de one demo and one other thing. It's not really a demo, but I want to show you guys and tell you what I think. Oh um, my god, that's kind of cute. Sure. Here we go. Oh, I saw this one. Yeah, here we go. How they think, but this is Apple One O One. It just didn't make sense to do a VR headset until now. When Apple releases something, it's because the preconditions for releasing something insanely great have been assembled. Really, that is the secret formula. Apple has made mistakes and you have to try things. But Apple tends to get the big things right. Now, I think that brings us to Siri. Oh. <laughs> Apple had an incredible lead and it seems to have vanished now. Siri feels antiquated. Isn't Apple dropping the ball at this point? You know, sometimes when you are the first, that means that going back and redoing the architecture when there are big breakthroughs takes more time. I'm like oddly compelled to keep listening, not for myself, but for Steve Jobs. I look like some weird hybrid of me and Christopher Walken. Yeah. So, yeah. Steve Jobs, <laughs> this reality headset is making my mind go cuckoo. Yeah. I was thinking Edward wow. Norton. You look a little bit like Edward There's Norton. There's a little Ed that. Norton, too. There's a yeah. little Ed Norton yeah. going on there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But not, not too, not too shabby. Uh, Jobs. I bought Apple stock in 1979. Yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, they're better off doing it with the 3D models. Yes. Right? But I mean, he, the, the thing I love about that version, and I think that the, the copy was written by the individual, not by AI, mm -hmm. is that it's, a fam it's familiar to have me interview a founder, which is cool. Yep. But if you put the right text in his, and you give him the right script, you know, and I listen, respect to the family, and like, we're not making a mockery of anything here. It just does bring back this, uh, and maybe there's some like period of time before doing these things that make sense. Mm -hmm. But it does make me really miss Steve Jobs being in the industry and the incredible force he was. I don't mean to get emotional mm -hmm. or anything, but like, he's just such a great force to have in the industry to comment on stuff and to push the industry and and it was like such a non-conformist and, and, and an incredible thinker that I just kind of miss hearing him pontificate i could listen to the guy for hours i have listened to the guy for hours
All right, you got a great idea for your tech startup. And hey, listen, you're going to change the world. I know you're going to do it. But there's a problem. You don't have engineers, right? You need engineers, you need those developers, but it's hard to find them. And it's certainly hard to find them quickly. So if you're trying to reduce your burn rate, and you're in a tight spot, and you need to get engineering talent right now, well, what you want to do is imagine there was a partner who could provide you with more than a 1000 on demand developers. These are really good developers, they're vetted, they're experienced, results oriented, and they're passionate about helping you grow your startup. And they're available at competitive rates. Does this sound too good to be true? Well, you need to head to lemon.io right now. Startups choose Lemon.io because they only offer hand-picked developers with three or more years experience, and they got to have strong portfolios. Only 1% of candidates who apply get in, and if something goes wrong, no problem. Lemon.io will get you a replacement as soon as possible. Many of our launch founders have worked with Lemon.io, and they've had great experiences. So here's your call to action to learn more. Go to Lemon.io slash twist and find your perfect developer or tech team in 48 hours or less. And Twist listeners get 15% off their first four weeks. So stop burning money, hire developers, and hire developers smarter by visiting lemon.io slash twist. Vinny, your feelings? Yeah, you hear I, that? I, I feel the same way. Um, I mean, I think it's a good segue to talk about Vision Pro. I mean, like, this is, yeah. this is the product. Um, I think they, none of us I, have used it yet. Yeah, they yeah. gave select 30 minute demos to yeah. specific, uh, I don't want to say friendly journalists, but you know, they, they're very savvy about who they give access to these things. Yeah. Uh, and Marquise Brown Lee did a good one uh, on, yeah, on YouTube yeah. on that. I saw that one. awesome. So, yeah, um, it's, so, it's a little so, bit of the PR game that Apple plays. They'll give early access to folks who they know are super favorable to Apple. That doesn't mm. mean they're going to get a glowing review, but I think they know how to mm. use access to early products as a way to shape reviews, uh, which I guess is all all for in love and PR but demos. Look, I'd like to talk about this more like from a strategic perspective because yes. I think a lot of people came out criticizing the price point. Okay, like who's going to so spend three and a half the, the, And I want to make it clear, like this so is... Th this is not. Th this is the first version of something which is game changing. You're going to get probably maybe even a million people buying it, and version two is going to be cheaper and better. Version three is going to be cheaper and better, and that's not Apple iterates. The Apple Watch version one was sucked. Version eight now is amazing, right? You and know what? I should say it's not. That's not a based comment. It's a basic comment. Let me restate. Um, the based comment would be, um, this thing just killed the oculus mm -hmm. whatever rift seven yeah what did you think it Sunday? didn't i think it does i think it and kills no it, it doesn't um, Th not this version not uh, this yeah, version I, I think i think there was a couple of issues right if you um if you take a step back you look at almost every scenario they showed it in it's a highly you know sort of single player mode mm -hmm. and i think one of the things that we've seen now is um you know, people maybe coming out of COVID or whatever it happens to be return to the office, people want to be in multiplayer mode. And so every, you know, that, that was something that really jumped out at me. Um, I think another, another thing that really was um, uh, unique in that, uh, you know, they have this mode where it shows your eyes. Mm. Um, and so they're mm. sort of contemplating you wearing it and then being around people that aren't wearing it. And I, I couldn't get my head around like what that use case would be, Jay Kyle. You're in your you office. I, yeah. So you're in your office and you're working and then I come up to you and you're staring you're in at your me. house. You're using it while cooking was like one example. Yeah. And you yeah. kind of have some transparency. Here's the there you go. Yeah. ready player one, dude. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, okay. So yeah. the reason why this just killed the entire metaverse and meta is done is because of apps. Uh, when you see this demo, what this is going to do, I don't think it. When I say it's it just killed it, um, the reason I think it killed it is because if you're an app developer, this is going to be 95% of your focus. You're going to deprecate everything you're doing on the Oculus uh, and, or whatever they're calling it. What do they call it now? The Meta Quest. Meta Quest. Um, but, 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 but Jason, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I, I fully agree with you there. I think they're two different markets they're going after. I think that 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 um, Facebook is definitely focusing on the gaming side of things a lot more. Than or productivity Apple, and communication. Yeah, pro exactly. Um, I, I think Apple is going to be, you know, it's a different market. And the price point, guys, it has to get down to sub $1,000 to go mass market. But that's going to take five years. 
in It'll those five less, but well i don't think so i don't think we get from three and a half thousand to models remember the iphone they came out with that se yeah. what was it called i i, I, I see no, but I, that happens when basically you end up lifing the certain yes. design you have excess capacity you can produce stuff that, i think that's it's what like happen here i think it's three three years minimum probably five most right. likely we, we, Listen, we can clip it, this. people pay but 1500 bucks but for their oh, iphones oh. now a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks they boil that frog it's been 16 it, years, Jason. This like, thing at $1,000, this thing's flying off the shelves. At $1,000, $1, yes. 1000 bucks ain't what it used to be. But the, I don't think they're going to go from 3500 down to 1000 in two or three years, in two cycles. See, uh, but Sonny, I, you know, what do you think? Yeah, Sonny, what um, do you think? Yeah, I, I think they'll get the price down. I'll, I'll take that side. I think they can get by, the price by when? down. By when? When does it go like, 999 Yeah, when That's is it That's the price point. Yeah, when, yeah. when it the, gets under 1000 dollars Let's just use like the iPhone curve. So the iPhone really took off in that third generation of iphone and so i think yeah three three years three to four years yeah that's what i would say down. between three and five yeah it will yeah, yeah. so i think three, we're all agreeing we'll, on a we'll, time we'll frame here three to five years yeah exactly okay so we uh, have the yeah. time frame but but so meta now the gauntlet's been thrown down so they have to respond what are they going to respond with the meta is going to be like the android to uh, to apple in this space right so it's going to be the cheaper they're going to try and make it even cheaper 500 bucks 300 bucks improve the quality etc cetera, etc cetera, and they're going to compete with apple and when it's down to 995 the quest is going to be 495 for whatever it is similar today which is i think 800 and they'll probably get it on so i don't yeah. think you're going to get i don't think you're going to get well, everyone can, can moving I to apple a different question on the pricing mm. so jake you know in, in the videos that we were just showing there which show it using it as like an infinite desktop that's the cost of like those studio displays, right? Those Apple studio displays are, they're about exactly right. They're like three to 5,000 bucks. Luxury product for them is yeah. that Mac pro tower and those luxury widescreens. I'm, I'm using one right now. That's yeah. exactly my point. You're, yeah. you're, how much did you pay for that? <laughs> Insanity. Uh, $5,000? I, I, I can't remember. No, I don't it's know. at least five grand. No, 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 the studio, so, no the, studio, the studio display is 2000. Okay. So just so you know, you could have bought the equivalent Dell monitor. And it would have been bigger and just as crisp for half the price. And then put Less a thousand dollar yeah. Dell computer on the back of it and had a Mac and a Dell. But yeah, I bought Apple. Getting a Dell. <laughs> yeah. but so so I, I think this use case that we're showing in the video here, which is like an infinite desktop, yep. I think is the right way to think about it. I think this is an interesting one for um yes. like which could really take off quickly in in a trade-off with the um the studio display. And so that's, mm -hmm. that I find a little bit fascinating. I, I just also would love to have this when I'm working, yeah, uh, in a hotel room, uh, on the road, in an Airbnb, on a plane, to be able to pull up your entire setup and to see through it if the flight attendant goes by and you want to ask him for Coke Zero or something, you can still do it through your headset. Um, yeah. And uh, this is the minority report future I've always wanted. So I, I love this. And I hate VR, but I can mm. see myself using this. And I don't use VR. I, 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 like, I, I bought VR a couple a of these of things. It's I don't like being trapped I, I would in use this. But every often. developer on the planet is now looking at this going, you know what? Yeah. I have an app in the App Store. Uh, every developer with an app in the App Store is saying, oh, what can, I, what, can I, what can I charge for this? So if you're Notion, if you're Grammarly, if you're Weight Room, whatever product you are or service, whatever game, com.com, Fitbod, if you're Fitbod and one of our investments, you're looking at this going, you know what? I can charge 50 bucks a year for people mm. wearing this while they work out and I can work on their technique. And when they yeah. just look around the gym, it uses visual AI to create an inventory of all your equipment. And then after it creates an inventory of your equipment, it creates you a workout based on you having, you know, dumbbells there or kettlebells or whatever. And then it directs you to the proper kettlebell of the proper weight and says, pick this one up. And it glows it red, you know, like this is your personal trainer, you know, AI personal trainer in this goggles. Now, people in the gym would sound ridiculous wearing this, but if it got you a better workout, it'd be worth it. So people glossed over this point uh, that I'm going to make now in, in, in the Apple announcement. They showed the integrations with Zoom, Microsoft mm -hmm. Meetings, e Waitroom potentially as well. They basically created this the, the, an SDK for video conferencing platforms to plug directly into this. And we're going to be the, one of the first to do it. Incredible. It's going to be amazing. And yes. I think that I think this is like they've really thought through how do you, you know, how do you put the how do you use these um, vision glasses, whatever you want to call it, to do remote work. It, 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 to me, it looks like, as, as Sunny said, a single player mode product. It's like 
You're at home. It sits yeah. next to your bed or wherever it is, and you use it when you buy yourself. But when you go out and play multi but play with your friends or you go to the office, you don't really need it. Uh, you know, I gotta think like, you know, virtual whiteboard services like Miro. You you pop this up. You got three people in the office. You know, mm -hmm. in Palo Alto, mm -hmm. and then you got two people. You know, Remote, in yeah. uh, Ukraine, and two people in Uruguay, and one person in Australia, and you're all just going through the product roadmap and building stuff in real time i could see a remote team all deciding to wear these 10 hours a day and build together mm -hmm. and be on the same what do they call those kanban boards is that the right term kanban yeah, yeah. yeah. kanban yeah. um yeah kanban um uh you know like a visual workflow yeah. some yeah. And then yeah. you have summer AI in the background. <laughs> well, you know, and then people could put on a track and say, hey, we, you, uh, like when I worked in an office, we had a Sonos and people would put tracks on the Sonos. It was kind of a fun way yeah. to share music with <clears> each <throat> other. Uh, some people would put their noise canceling headphones on and not participate in it. But it was like a fun thing to do on a Friday. But you mm -hmm. can imagine people like walking up to the Kanban board, picking an item, a story, and then walking away with it and putting it on their task. And then me being able to walk over to their cube or whatever it is and watch them working in real time writing code. And like, there's just 10 desktops in a space. And I walk around like the plant manager at a factory. And I walk up to the designer's desk, I see them working. Mm. This would be a way to navigate um, the big tension between remote workers and the management. Management is yeah. scared that you're working on two different jobs and they can't see you. Yeah. Workers are like, trust us, we're going to do some side projects probably, but yeah, during the day, but, when, you know, <laughs> but just seriously, trust us. Um, and then imagine you, you're, you know, during these four hour blocks, we're having two, four hour blocks, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, I could walk around and see everybody working and what they're working on and watch them work. It's kind of cool. Uh, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be creep or anything. I could, you could do the same thing. You walk over to my desk and if you walk over, it just chimes me that you're there, mm. you know, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, zuckerberg or you know walks around the design team hey what are you working on just a casual yeah. meet and greet you could just set it for maybe hey ev every afternoon for three hours we're going to do a co-working session together and you just have a virtual co-working session what do you guys think i think it's great and I, i'm looking forward to that world uh, i think this is a much needed product i'm excited by it because I, I i work from home so like i am i am in single player mode all the time this is I, a, a lot of people do by the way like i think it's a big enough market all right, Vinny, you got to go. Thanks for coming go. on. Congrats on uh, your work on weightroom.com. Thank Everybody you. Go check it out. Check out the weight room. All right. Thanks, uh, Thanks, let's rip through these. Uh, Sonny, you got a couple more demos yeah. for me. Yeah, I do. Um, we'll save some as well because, you know, uh, but let me show you uh, this next one here. I saw you doing Replit. I saw you writing some code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you taking credit that. for some uh, uh, Replit co-pilot code? No, no, no. That's all, all mine. Uh, I mean, Ooh. I did use the co-pilot. I thought this was interesting. So this is uh, using control net to uh, take the, uh, you know, QR codes, but mm -hmm. make them artistic. So obviously uh. we've seen these a lot these days because they're, you know, people use them for menus and, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I actually, you know, I like the integration that Apple and everyone has done where you can just open up your camera and, and, and do it. You don't need anything kind of special. But this idea of turning it into a, um, and I think on this one right here, you can pull this one up uh, if you want, and you can just put it on your screen if you want to pull your phone up and it'll, it'll open the link up. And so um, the idea that you can make a QR code artistic and having the AI do it, I thought was really, really bright and just, um, you know, could open up a lot of new possibilities of embedding more information inside a scene or inside a, an advertisement um, and make it sort of native. And so all of these ones that I'm just scrolling through here uh, can all trigger your iPhone um, or your any, any, I guess, can be any phone. Um, wow, these are uh, stunning. What a great idea. Yeah, they're and really, really awesome. This is all done with Control Net. Control Net, control yes. Net is a stable diffusion model, correct? Correct. Part correct. of stable diffusion. Yeah, um, you, it's it's basically prompts for you, you give it a reference image. Yes, say this is what I want to start with. I believe that's the difference, right? Control that. Yeah, you have to uh, have. yeah. You give it your image and then your QR code, and then it comes up with this, um, mm. which is you know I I was really blown away by these, and so anyways, I I thought this was really so cool. Um, yeah. yeah, 
And maybe we can do some of these at the and summit. For stable for mm-hmm. people who understand what stable diffusion is, maybe you could explain the when people say stable diffusion, it's a little bit of confusion because it's an open source project and a company. Maybe you could explain what that is architecturally on a business basis. Uh, yeah, I'll just kind of go down the basics. Like so, when we talk about open AI, their models are like you know GPT X, right? Where it's one, two, three, four. And that's then how they, they have name a, it. That's their naming that's, convention. Th- that's their naming convention. And then they have uh, a different one for Dolly, which is their image generator. So Stable Diffusion has a model called Stability that is their image generator. Um, and so Stable Diffusion is the company and like that would be OpenAI. And they have a model called Stability Stability AI that is their, um, that's their model that they use. And so you can use this open source project to make your own, you can fork it and make your own versions and compete against stable diffusion, the company or the startup company is called stability AI, I guess. Sorry, Um, the company is called stability AI and their model is called stable diffusion. Right. So this is super confusing, confusing. So (laughs) this for people who don't have the reference point here, if you listen to this week and startups probably do wordpress.org. It's an open source project. A bunch of people for free contribute to the code. There's WordPress.com, which is a for-profit, multi-billion-dollar company run by Matt Mullenweg that provides hosting services and services around that open source project. So you could take Stable Diffusion. You can make your own products and services out of it. You're well within your rights. There are some rights where you have to give back, but um, yeah, this is a great use of um, st- yeah, Stable Diffusion. Yeah, crazy. All right, you got one more for me? Hit me with one more. Yeah, you the, the last one. Yep. Oh, this is your so, Yeah, so here, you know, I just wanted to bring this up because I think a lot of people are tuning in and, you know, I think a lot of kudos here to, to Replit and then, you know, a couple of projects here, you know, specifically Langchain. Um, and so what I, you know, wanted to show here is um, one, Replit makes it quite easy to get into a development environment and, and, and build something. You don't have to configure anything on your machine anymore. Everything, everything's done in a cloud. It's like a hosted, it's a hosted IDE, uh, that also has, you know, access to a shell and everything else it needs. And they make it easy to deploy. So what I did was, is I created my own, um, chatbot here that sort of has three functions. It can do searches out in the internet. It can calculate things and it can run some Python code. Uh, and you can see here, it's only about you know, 60 lines of code for, for this. Incredible. And so yeah. it it's really is incredible. And I can deploy it. And if I go here, uh, we'll just refresh this. This is, you know, I've, I've deployed it out to here. And so we can ask something. Uh, okay. you know, what is the weather in San Francisco, to, uh, San Francisco today? And uh, what you'll see is it'll just kind of go through the process and realize it needs to um and it's here it's like had a thought do i need to use a tool yes uh i need that's current search and then so it 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 inputs this into weather in san francisco today it gets that back obviously Mm -hmm. i'm just showing you the innards here but you'll if if i didn't have that and it's using uh, llm chain it's using lang chain uh alongside alongside a service that provides um uh, like, uh, uh, search engine results API. So SERP API is a service. Mm-hmm. And so it allows the LLM to go out to the internet to get this information, get the mm-hmm. summary, and then provide it back. So if we didn't, so there's three steps. It first figures out it needs to use a tool, then it looks for the weather, it gets that back from a search engine reply, uh, it then says, do I need to do anything else? No, it has the answer, and then it basically mm. returns that back. And so the what I wanted to show here is you know for folks that are not uh, and or have not been developing for a long time the barrier to entry is quite low to build these bots and uh, you know there's lots of tools so the tools I used in, in that particular code that I showed you here were very simplistic uh, you know Langchain tools for current search or calculator in, in a in a Python runner um, I really want to encourage folks to to go and try it because between Replit and between these open source projects, you can get going quite quickly and you can create something that's pretty remarkable that runs um, and you can, ha- you can even have it deployed out to the internet on a URL as you see here. Yeah, great. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well done. All right. Uh, I think this is enough product. You should be inspired to go do more friends of the show. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I'm really excited about the Apple vision pro. I'll buy the first one. I think the, when it's combined with AI, but this is going to be one of the nice things about it, um, is it's going to land right as a lot of these AI development kits kind of hit, uh, some level of, yep. you know, critical mass and or fidelity, let's say fidelity. And so it being able to look or look at your refrigerator and identify everything and just tell you the inventory of your refrigerator yep. as you open and close your eyes. I really think people are underestimating how great this would be. Just literally, you're going to be able to put this on, open each cabinet, look at each shelf, move stuff around, um, and then look at the bo- each of the boxes and it will make you a list of everything yes. in your cupboards. Yep. Then you're going to be able to tell it as you're looking at stuff. There'll be an interface, a chat GPT interface for Uber Eats or Uber Grocery or uh, Instacart or Good Eggs. And you'll literally be looking at your pasta shelf and say, you know what? Uh, add some Barilla Capellini uh to the checklist and i'm like dang it's great use, it's a great use case i hadn't thought about that but i think it'll be an excellent use case imagine like, walking around your house just looking at every single uh you know uh appliance yep. and then having a catalog every appliance i'm always thinking about estate management now because i have yep. two houses and <laughs> you start to think about these things yep just walking around looking at everything the back and the front of everything getting every model and then it telling you hey you know your sonos is out of date this is a seven-year-old sonos here's the new ones this is the cost difference would you like me to get you a quote for this yep. right so you take something like thumbtack which we're investors in and imagine thumbtack you just walk around your home and it's like hey you know the handle's broken here and you just yep. speak out loud what's wrong I think, I think this deck needs to be sanded i think this needs to happen it just boom goes out and gets your quotes wow yeah yeah it it yeah. being your assistant on the side and this is where siri could actually make an incredible recovery. Imagine Siri was able to do that. And they made a Siri connected to a yeah. chat GPT four level. I take the other side. Um, I think you'll just, I think you said it right. Um, the apps will do it. Right. And so there'll be incredible apps that you'll load up. It doesn't even have to be native within, uh, you know, sort of the operating system of the headset. So you'll just have an app that's there for inventory or a- app for what should I do? What can I eat? I think you'll have all these kind of use cases. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, All right, listen, amazing job. Really appreciate you taking the time to come on again. And we'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. Bye-bye.